welcome to Real Wine. So instead of doing a regular episode, we decided to do a Halloween special where we're tasting some spooky wines. I'm a vampire, obviously. Um, not for real though, so it's okay, but I actually can't talk or taste with these in. You get it, you've seen it. I'm gonna take them out now. <laughs> okay, so we're just tasting wines today. We've got three because I couldn't choose between the awesome bottles that I found. So let's jump right in. You may also notice that I'm not using the standard issue glass and I really don't care. So the wine snobs can deal with it. Uh, it's a Halloween goblet. For our first one, we have this amazing Riesling from Germany, okay? Look, this is a cat. Can you see this clearly? How crazy is that? <laughs> so it's a 2010 Riesling, and there are a lot of words on the back of this bottle that I'll be honest with you, I cannot pronounce, so I'm probably not gonna try. Um, and it's from the Zeller Schwartz region, and I just couldn't pass this up around Halloween time, so let's see if it's any good. Kinda hard to smell something in this plastic cup, I gotta be honest. It's obviously very light floral. Rieslings tend to be really sweet. Tart, <laughs> definitely tart. Uh, when you first take it into your mouth, it's uh, kind of effervescent, almost like a champagne and a bite when you swallow in the back of your throat. It's, a, it's got a kick, it's sour, almost like a sour candy. It's got some acidity, like more than a normal Riesling. Oh, I like it, that's fun. Plus I love the bottle, I'm gonna collect them, I think. Okay, so you may also have noticed all the candy here, and I'm gonna do something a little unorthodox and totally crazy. I'm gonna try a different candy with each of the wines that we have here, because it is Halloween. Since this one had a little bit of the effervescence in it, I think I'm gonna have some Pop Rocks with it. That's right. <laughs> all right, I sincerely hope I don't die. There was that urban legend, right, about Pop Rocks and exploding, so, I don't know, let's see. Definitely a fun experience. I think you guys should try this at home. <laughs> and I didn't die yet, so that's good. All right, Pop Rocks and Riesling, who knew? All right, up next, we have the Armida Winery Poison Zin, because it's a Zinfandel. Uh, one of my favorite wines, actually, are Zinfandels. They're usually pretty strong, bold wines. Okay. Oh, so it's a, it's a 2009 Zinfandel from Sonoma County. And there is a fascinating poem on the back here that I read earlier. You should look it up. Oh, wow. I smell that already. That has changed so much in from the second I poured it <laughs> until now. Seriously, it's weird. Like at first it was a really heavy, like um, it smelled like humidity. Uh, if you're from the South, you kind of know what that feels like when you breathe in and it's like thick in the air, but immediately sort of it came off of that and it's more fruity, but also like a sp spicy like peppercorn. Oh, there's something and I can't quite place it. There's some very specific smell. I blame the glass. All right, let's try it. Wow, that's got a kick. It's like fruity like in the very tip of your mouth and then in the middle to back of your mouth, it gets um, spicy, like real, like a, a kick, like even um, cinnamon, which is a warm spice or even a uh, black pepper. I think it probably needs to air out. And it's pretty young still for Zen. So using a decanter on it to sort of even out those flavors, you're probably gonna get more fruit tomorrow even. Um, so it's definitely okay to let this one sit for a while. I think there's something about this goblet that makes me just wanna chug wine though, it's weird. I'm interested to see how it, how it ages, how it airs out in the, in the glass and even you know tomorrow. So I might just have to let you know how that goes later, I bet. Pairing a little chocolate with this wine will change the flavor a lot. So, I have little off-brand Reese cups, I think. I don't actually know what this chocolate is. All right, so let's just, let's see how it changes it. Off-brand Reese's cup. When you're tasting wine and chocolate together, you actually do wanna get the chocolate like all over your mouth and still let it sort of be in your mouth when you taste the wine so that you get the full impact of the flavors together. Mm-hmm. I think what happens is the chocolate sort of coats your mouth, you know? So you get that sort of film. So it's a little barrier between your mouth and the ta and your taste buds and 
the wine. That goes nicely. Cheers. So you may have noticed that this episode looks a little different than the rest. That's because we threw it together at the last minute to get a Halloween episode out. But we do still have a wine under nine segment. This time though, it's a spooky wine under nine. This is Dearly Beloved Forever Red. And I got this at Trader Joe's only because of the label. I'll be honest, sometimes I do that, but it looks pretty cool, right? And totally goes with the Halloween theme. This one is a crazy blend with like five different grapes in it. So I'm pretty curious about how they all come together. I'm about to spill it. It's really a um, kind of mild flavor. There's a lot of smell when you first swirl it and then it dies off like almost immediately, which is weird. Kind of fruity, a little blackberry, maybe smoke, like it's kind of smoky. Hmm. Definitely smoky. Definitely, that's what I was smelling. It's got a long finish in the back of your throat. There's some, some interesting lingering taste going on there. You taste wine kind of like you do mouthwash. A little bit, like if you really want to taste it in all the different areas, you switch it around, you know? And it's like exactly sort of what you do, but a little less violently than maybe you do with mouthwash. I think it could use some candy corn. Our last and not least candy of the day. Hmm. That makes it worse. Yep. Oh. Definitely. Definitely weird that way. Mm. All right. We were on a roll. Even Trader Joe's itself online said that they didn't want to say it was all about the package, but it's sort of all about the package. So I wasn't judging this line too harshly <laughs> because let's be honest, but I bet this one too would get better after it ages a little bit longer. It does have some interesting things in there. It's just a little sharp right now. Definitely, definitely don't drink it with candy corn. <laughs> well, that does it for our first Halloween special. As always, let us know what you thought and subscribe to the channel. And if you make a wine that you'd like us to feature, send me an email. Hope you guys have some fun plans for Halloween. And until next time, ci vediamo un'altra volta. Drink up. <laughs>